The first step in developing a HASA program is to gain management commitment and to assemble a HASA team. Top management must be fully committed to product safety through HACCP to make the program effective. After the commitment is obtained, the HACCP team can be assembled. The HACCP team should be multidisciplinary and should represent individuals from all areas of the facility. For example, this team can include representatives from QA, R&D, sanitation, maintenance, shipping and receiving, production, and purchasing departments, bringing in knowledge from different parts of operations helps identify food safety risks from different points of view. It also facilitates communication to each department for successful implementation. To assemble the team, First, start off by assigning a HACCP team leader who has an official HACCP training certificate and has experience in the field. Prepare a list of all HACCP team members to identify the team leader, the title of each member, their contact info, and the type of HACCP training they have received. If a food safety consultant is hired to support the company's food safety programs, his or her name can be added to the list of team members as a secondary member. Once the HACCP team is formed, it is important for its members to meet on a regular basis to ensure the program is being developed consistently until completion. Some of their tasks will include reviewing information, conducting hazard analysis, and discussing implementation strategies as well as any issues that have been found. They will need to make decisions on the following items. The number of HASA plans, the scope of each HASA plan, which lists all the products and processes falling under each plan, and they will have to decide on human and financial resources. HACCP meeting minutes should be properly recorded, and issues, action plans, responsibilities, and due dates should be set and monitored. The corrective actions should be verified to ensure they are effective. After HACCP has been implemented, they should continue to meet on a regular basis, perhaps every six months, and whenever changes need to be made to the HACCP plans. The HACCP team may be asked for an interview by the auditor to test their knowledge about HACCP. At minimum, they should know the 12th step for developing a HACCP program as well as the seven principles. When determining the number of HACCP plans, normally similar products with similar hazards produced in the same line are grouped together under one HACCP plan. The number of HACCP plans needed depends on the types of products processed, the number of products processed, the differences in processing steps and equipment used, as well as the hazards and controls associated with ingredients and products. Products can often be grouped into one category and use one HACCP plan if they differ only in characteristics that do not affect food safety. For example, if the products only vary in flavor, let's uh, take a paddy line where perhaps different recipes are produced or where the hamburgers are packed in different packaging formats. Since the products are similar and are running on the same line and using the same equipment, only one has a plan should be developed. Let's take another example 
where allergens are of concern. Some companies dedicate lines and equipment to run allergenic products, such as products containing peanuts. Therefore, a HACCP plan should be developed to address solely the dedicated line, even if they may be producing different flavors and packaging formats. When grouping products together, try to consider similarities and differences between equipment, processes, ingredients, and their associated hazards, as well as food safety characteristics. Develop a name that covers the scope for each group. This name will be included in the header of each HACCP form. For example, vacuum-packed products can be used for similar products that are vacuum-packed and produced in the same line. After setting the scope and determining products and processes which fall under each HACCP plan, we will move on to the next step, which is about gathering information for finished products, ingredients, processing aids, and packaging materials.